All right, well today is the right way to do the wrong way kind of floors. Hey, Valera. On your Mustang. Now, if you're a professional restorer and you have a spot welder, a spot weld cutter, um, an A-code Mustang, even a C-code Mustang, just turn the video off. This is not for you. Now, however, you're a 17 year old kid and all you have is an uncle who promises to rivet some floors into your Mustang with some glue. Yes, this video is for you. This is how you do the floors the right way, the wrong way. At any rate, it's better than what your uncle's gonna do with that rivet gun. Stay away from the rivets. A lot of you would agree that a six cylinder Mustang or a two barrel 289 Mustang that is too far gone, as many would say, is just a ticket for a young man to learn to weld and lose some confidence in himself. It doesn't have to be perfect. I mean, freaking hey, these are unibody cars and they're not really built that well. And anything is better than a giant hole in the floor and anything is better than some adhesive and some rivets. Anyways, I'll get right to it. So, this Mustang was $350. It came with uh, floor pans. Now, the tricky part is lining everything up. Um, they won't exactly fit like they're supposed to. You know, I cut the floors out with a with a cutoff wheel, and I left these for the seat risers because then it gives me something to align with. Also, a trick is do one one side at a time. You can see how rusty that floor is right there. Um, where it's not rusty, it's paper thin. So it's both floors are getting replaced, but you do one at a time so you can set it up. There is a frame rail here. When you jack the car up on jack stands, make sure to not put any jack stand under this frame rail because it'll tweak up with the floor gone. Um, also, there is a rail here. Slam it down with a sledgehammer or something. As you can see where I painted right there, my originally I had the floors in a little bit too high and I had to lower it substantially once I got under the car and realized it wasn't going to actually touch the cross member or whatever it is it's called. All right, here's what we got so far. Ugly, but workable. All right, to give you an explanation what butt welding is, so you take a die grinder, you cut straight across through both materials, you remove this piece, um, and then if you have a flux core welder, you're pretty much screwed because you're just not gonna be able to do it right. You make a huge mess, you grind it down, and then you're probably gonna have to go at it, obviously, again, because um, there's, you know, kind of a bigger gap. I'm still gonna have to cut a patch for here because there's a lot of rust that goes all the way up to here. It's paper thin. And I'm still gonna have to patch the seat riser. I should have realistically bought another seat riser, but you know. Oh, also, a uh, word of advice. Get the metal down to bare metal before welding. Otherwise, you just have to knock it all down again and basically go over it again. Um, Cause the tar and the other contaminants, they just really messed your weld. And at best, it'll look like that. At worst, it'll be a giant mess. And like I said, you knock it down, try again. I butt welded all along here. I lap welded over there just because there was just not much room to reach. And honestly, unless you're doing a rotisserie or have some actual easy access, then uh, butt welding is a pain in the butt. It winds up a lot uglier than lap welding on an, on a flux core welder. Now, if you have a shielded welder, oh, of course, go ahead. You're going to do some beautiful welding with butt welding. Well, there's more to come, but that is how you do floors the wrong right way or the right wrong way i guess you could say not a perfect setup but floors are a structural thing they have to be done do not use rivets guys please don't buy a 90 dollars welder if you have to i'll be the first to advocate those pieces of crap i uh i use a 170 dollars welder but again that takes 220 so if, if you're too intimidated by that just use the 90 amp one they they do work not well, but they do work. For sheet metal work, they're they're sufficient. Oh, and uh, if you got a door that you're gonna replace, feel free to use the door for patches. The skin, or not the skin, the uh, full length floor panel didn't have a patch right there. I had to fabricate one. And that piece obviously wasn't part of that, so I made that too, but it's all coming together and hopefully we'll rock this thing pretty soon.